to my channel, my name is Odolena and today is Sunday, time for another book review. Today's book that I'm reviewing is called How Not To Be Wrong by Jordan Allenberg. What is this about this book that attracted me? Now, especially we listen to a lot of media about statistics, about probabilities, about prognosis and forecasting. It's so easy to be wrong. Actually, one of the main points of this book is how easy to be, it is to be wrong if you don't know uh, the pitfalls of mathematics and statistics. At first sight, mathematics and statistics uh, sounds like a very easy thing that everybody can do. It's like 2 plus 2 is 4 and that's it. And there is no chance that you'll be wrong. But the reality is that many statistical and uh, forecasting methods uh, have led to a lot of misinformation and have been used very, very cleverly uh, and by not so clever people in uh, election campaigns in medical surveys. So this book teaches you how to see through this mathematics and to see through the mistakes uh, and what is actually meant, what the results of something actually mean. One of the first uh, chapters talks a little bit about what is missing. And this is something that I keep seeing is that we miss some data and we make conclusions based on incomplete data. There is one example, Abraham Wald who was a mathematician working for the United States during World War II, they had to actually come up with a solution where to put extra armors on the army planes. The army planes that were returning from Europe had holes in different parts of them and they would just literally count the bullet holes to figure out which part is the most vulnerable and which part they should focus most. So the statistical approach which they took initially was to count where you have most holes so therefore you have to protect this part of the plane with extra armor but he thought about where are the holes that we don't see well the holes that we don't see in that case were on planes that never returned back home because they were hit so badly and they crashed so all these crashed planes uh, with their bullet holes were missing data and the ones that actually returned to uh, the United States were the ones that were lucky actually and they were hit in the less vulnerable parts like the wings, the cartilage, uh, but they were not hit in the engine. So this is one way where statistical thinking, when it's not married with the, with the reality of the day, can go into completely wrong conclusion. And mathematics is always right, yes, but it depends on what uh, outcome and what decision you take based on the numbers. He also talks about something called the Laffer curve. The Laffer curve is a big uh, parabola which is uh, showing, let's say, how much revenue is the state gathering based on the tax rate. And the idea is that at some point you reach a saturation, let's say the, the taxes are so high that if you actually continue getting uh, taxes high up, people will start cheating and the state is going to get less revenue. So this one was very, very suitable for the Republicans in the United States who wanted to cut off some taxes and get very good results for them. So what they did is they reduced uh, taxes thinking that they were overtaxed. However, even after that, the government did not get what they wanted. They did not get uh, any more revenue. Uh, and the reason is because if this curve it is so smooth and so easily like uh, drawn like a really nice smooth parabola then how do you know which part of the parabola you are? Are you under taxing or over taxing people and how do you uh, compare this? How do you come up with this solution? Uh, also another thing is that whether this parabola is smooth and even uh, like a nice little bell or it is maybe like a hump or like a trapeze or like um, maybe it is just a squiggly. Another example that he gives about uh, how to be wrong with mathematics is again journalism. So journalists are very keen on using statistics, proportions in order to make impact in their writing and of course to get to certain agenda. So he gives one example uh, with American journalists who often measure uh, how much is this in debt, Americans? This is the title of the chapter, quite creepy. So what he means is that if there are a thousand people dead in Israel because of a conflict uh, based uh, as a proportion of their population, which is six million, 
If we compare this as a proportion to the American population, there will be 100,000 deaths. So that sounds really, really bad. So they want to emphasize how big actually the impact of this conflict is. However, there is one mistake. If you go uh, into smaller countries than Israel, then it sounds really stupid. Let's say if you measure uh, what is the proportion, uh, if this had happened in one of the smallest countries in the world, like Tuvalu, that would be like one or two people, because Tuvalu has about 10,000 uh, residents. And if we measure that in Slovenians, that will be about 300 people. So you cannot really measure uh, the proportions this way. The best way to actually say it is to say that there were 1,000 people died in that conflict and that's it. It doesn't matter what proportion it is from the population. It's just a trick for journalists to make it sound more than it actually is or less than it actually is and to kind of convince you about uh, the scariness of a situation. We constantly see this nowadays with coronavirus and people completely measuring the proportion of deaths and the proportion of recoveries. And also there are two biases here. First, we are missing the bullets. So we don't have all the data because not all countries are testing uh, their residents uh, in the same way, with the same tests and the same regularity. The other bias is comparing this to the population of the country. Yeah, as number might sound really scary, but comparing it to the population is not so bad. However, you should always look into uh, where it is uh, happening. Let's say whether this is one region of the country. For example, uh, people comparing uh, the uh, victims uh, in China only to uh, Wuhan or comparing them to the entire population of China. Statistical significance. This is another favorite one of a lot of scientists and a lot of journalists and it's been taken in so many cases wrongly. One survey which I read about in the book was hilarious. Um, they actually asked uh, about 200, 228 women in the United States, all married, all in their, let's say, fertile years. Uh, and they asked them whether they support uh, Romney or Obama. Uh, they found out that 40% of the women who were during their fertile part uh, of their period, let's say they were in ovulation, they were more likely to support Romney, whereas only 23% of the women uh, who uh, were actually in their infertile days were going to support Romney. So this is quite hilarious because actually, based on the way we measure statistical significance nowadays, which is with a p-value, this uh, statistical test has, uh, has a significance. So p-value is lower than 0 0.5, which uh, theoretically might mean that this is something uh, true. And whenever you read in documents, in uh, publications, when you see that there is statistical significance, uh, then you think, okay, well, this is something serious. However, it can be absolute bollocks in that case. Because imagine, let's say a woman changes uh, during the month, like some weeks she's very fertile, some weeks she's not. So let's say if uh, she is more likely to support Romney during the time when she's fertile, who does she support the rest of the time when she's on her period? That's really weird questions. And uh, obviously the survey doesn't answer this one. Why did I decide to actually read this book? This is part of my plan to get my mind in the right shape, to make sure that I comprehend information fully and understand what is going on. You cannot rely on other people to inform you, especially on the media or uh, other uh, president candidates, uh, politics, whatever. It's very, very important for you to do your own thinking in anything in life. So using this kind of books can help you really uh, develop this kind of scientific approach to what's going on in the world. It's very easy to be scared and get emotional over percentages, over statistics and proportions and linear regressions. And if you haven't been very good at maths uh, in school, and plus most of these concepts that are in the book never even make it into the curriculum because they're considered too complicated and profound, uh, the reality is that these are things that are comprising our everyday life. And the more and more we come up with um, big events that are happening in our life, the more and more uh, people are trying to convince us about certain things, whether they're good or bad for us. Uh, you know how many opinions there are about whether you should drink vitamins or not drink vitamins. 
studies and surveys like this um, he talks about the fact that statistical significance is nothing but a value which can be easily uh, something minor so this kind of thinking and this kind of scientific approach really making sure you understand the numbers and what's going on and whether this actually can be figured with math out or not as there are many questions for which math is not the right tool uh, it's like watching at Jupiter and trying to see its moons with a binocular you just better watch it uh, with your own eyes because you don't have the right tool so same with this book, it's super important and I have a bunch of other similar books stacked on my desk ready to be read and reviewed. If you like this kind of videos, check out the rest on this playlist, uh, subscribe to my channel and I'll be coming with a new video next weekend. Thanks so much for watching.